be quiet because hearing for these players is absolutely everything. We'll run through some of the main points of difference between five aside and 11 aside football. After the anthems, and we'll start with Brazil, of course. Really great to see a good crowd in early in the morning here in Rio. Morocco making their debut at the Paralympic Games in this sport. Hugely proud occasion for the champions of Africa. That's the lineup for Group A. With Turkey, the European champions, taking on Iran later in the day. But we're going to be formally introduced to all the players and wait for a big cheer for the Brazil captain, Ricardinho. Regarded as the best player in the world. Brazilian starting five, the goalkeeper Luan. Uh, he's the only player who wasn't part of the gold medal winning side in London four years ago. The other four are Paralympic champions. As we go through the Brazilian substitutes, and most will get a run out here because there are rolling substitutes There's no limit to the number you can make some nerves in the Morocco team I think Barra is their goalkeeper 
Imad Berker, the number four, says his ambition is to compete in visually impaired boxing. So one imagines he'll be fairly rough with his, uh, his defending today. Abderazak Hatab scored plenty of goals in the African Championship earlier in the year. But everyone waiting to see just what kind of level Morocco are going to produce here. Their first ever match in the Paralympic five-a-side tournament. There aren't many teams competing in this sport in Africa. Morocco came through the African Championships in Cameroon last year, in fact, not conceding a goal, but when they're put on the same stage as a team with the capabilities of Brazil, not many would expect them to be able to keep pace. Not many can, frankly, in Europe or South America either, for that matter. So it would appear to be a tall order for the Moroccans. Fabio Vasconcelos is the Brazil coach, and the reason that Luan, the goalkeeper for his team, is... A new man at the Paralympics is because Vasconcelos kept goal himself in each of the three previous gold medal winning teams for Brazil. The lead referee is from Argentina, Mariano Travaglino. So a good chance perhaps just to run you down some of the key points of difference again. We mentioned 25 minutes each way. You may well be aware that the ball has metal plates in it with ball bearings attached, so it makes a noise as it rolls across the ground that the players use to identify their own position in relation to it. The crowd have to be silent for that reason. The players are constantly communicating with one another. They are getting instructions from the touchline as well and from the goalkeeper, of course. You'll see there are dotted lines on the field which divide the pitch into thirds the goalkeeper will communicate in the defensive third with his team the head coach in the middle third and then there's a guide behind the goal as well if either team gets a penalty you'll see the guide tapping the posts to give the player a sense of exactly where the target is and that guide will communicate to with the forwards as they're moving towards goal in open play There are kickboards along the side of the pitch, but not along the goal line. And again, that will help the players identify where one another are and where the ball is and keep the ball in play for large periods. The clock is only stopped for timeouts because each team does have one, one minute timeout per half for injuries and for substitutions, except in the last two minutes of each half when the clock gets stopped for free kicks. So the last two minutes of each half can take a little longer. And maybe just contribute to an extra feeling of drama as we get close to the interval into the final whistle. There is Fabio Vasconcelos. Three Paralympic gold medals in his locker. New territory for Driss El Muntaki. What a hugely proud moment to be the first representatives of your entire continent in Paralympic five-a-side football. These guys are pioneers from Morocco. But they are the rank outsiders here against Brazil, no doubt about that. just checking the eye masks of all the players. Again, many of these players will be completely blind, but some have limited vision. And so the necessity for these masks, which are checked and double checked, is clear.
And the crowd have got the message, haven't they? There's a real unique atmosphere to these five-a-side games. Silence, absolutely key. Of course, when a goal goes in, it will change. So a terrific sense of anticipation and of tension in the Olympic Tennis Centre for the start of the five-a-side football tournament. Brazil in the green, the world number one side and defending champions, the only side that's ever won gold in the Paralympic Games against the new African champions, Morocco in the red. And this man on the ball now, Ricardinho, such a dangerous player. And he's found a pass to Cassio. Ricardinho waiting, loves to receive it on the left and cut back in towards the goal. Here's Jeffinho. Many people feel he is the second best player in the world. Brazil already are moving the ball between players well. Cassio with Imad Berker, the defender. Here's Jeffinho again. Ricardinho, it's the kind of wonderful skill he's capable of. The crowd got quite excited when he pulled that trick off. The extra sounds that players have to deal with sometimes that come from places they shouldn't. And he was uh, chopped down. So Ricardinho will using the sounds from the guy behind the goal to orientate himself and get the direction proper if he's thinking about a shot here. There's the guide who will often tap the posts to give that sonic instruction. Here it comes. Cardinho will go on the dribble. Just slicing the shot with the outside of the right boot. But applause for the first effort on goal from the defending champions. Defending by Nonato there. He stayed persistent. El Azuzi is the Moroccan making the challenge on Ricardinho. And here's Ricardinho again. The Moroccans keeping together centrally as a four. Cassio by the boards. Now Hatab, who has located it well, and he's the man who got the goals at the African Championships last year. Shepherded out comfortably enough by Nonato in the end. There was half a chance of a shot for Hatab. Jeffinho. Rushing out to Cassiu. Becker was in strongly. A couple of big swipes, didn't he? Well, they're robust, the Moroccans, so far. This is Hussam Gili, the number seven. Ricardinho made the challenge. And all defenders have to make their presence clear 
to the ball carrier by saying the word voy or something similar over and over again so that and with the ball knows that there's a defender in the area. Now Azuzi with the tackle on Nonato, a fair one, but Brazil will get the goal kick. Mask has come away from uh, Gili. Referee has to be hot on that for obvious reasons. I don't think Driss El Muntaki, the Morocco coach, will be too dissatisfied. Just the one attempt on goal in the opening four minutes, 19 seconds. The expectation is that uh, Argentina will be the big challengers to Brazil. It's been a great rivalry between, between the two sides in visually impaired football. Argentina in the uh, opposite group with Mexico, Spain and China. The tackle by Berger who got strongly into Ricardinho. He is making his presence felt. Cassiu. Corner's been given. Gilly's challenge on Jefinho. getting his bank of three defenders organized but Jefinho is immediately escaping from the corner flag going the long way around looking to find space Morocco to their credit completely denied him it and this is El Azuzi you can hear the shouts of Voy from the defenders have to come regularly of course the attacker will try and process that information as quickly as possible to work out where the defender is coming from. Stationary ball, of course, presents a problem, so the referee steps in to get it moving, making a sound again so the players can locate it. Interception of the pass, and there might be a shot on here for Morocco. Oh, it's a good save by Luan from Abdel Razak Hatab. An impressive from Hatab that he was running through yes onto a ball that was in the open yes but he locates this so well and the first time shot huge celebration from Luan a big chance for Morocco chance all of Hatab's making with the interception initially Here's the corner. Uh, Zuzi took that over the goal line. Well, that will be a huge confidence boost to the Moroccans, I think. Cefinho seeking out Ricardinho, so often his partner in crime. There can miss the clearance. So here's Ricardinho again. Such tremendous quick feet. Oh! Well, he's unlucky in the end with the finish, but that is why so many regard him as the best player in the world. The swiftness of the dribble, there's just no stopping this. Right into a central position, and the guy behind the goal can't believe he hasn't finished it. Got the height on it to get it over the goalkeeper, but just pulled it wide of the post. Becker in there in front of Cassio. Becker. Instinctively realising the ball was further up the field and did well to find it, but Ricardinho again emerged and he was tripped by El Azuzi. And of course he will draw so many fouls, Ricardinho, with the swift dribbling feet that he's got. 
And the accumulation of fouls can be an issue too, is an issue in this form of the game. Five personal fouls, and you have to be replaced immediately. Team fouls count as well. When you get to three, there'll be a shot on goal from the eight meter penalty mark, which is the further away of the two penalty spots we could see in the previous shot. Cassio and Ricardinho over the free kick. Here we go. It will be Ricardinho. The defenders are out to him and they got a deflection on it in the nick of time. Came off Hussam Gili. Ricardinho from the corner. It's just terrific again. So difficult to know which way he's going to go. But then here's Hatab for Morocco. You had their only significant chance. And forced the best save of the game. Cassio got in his way this time. Now Jeffinho, how quickly can he find this? Gilly is sticking to his task. Of course, hearing is so essential, but defenders like in any form of the game, touch is vital too. Here they're locating the body shape of the opponent, working out which way he might go. Now Ricardinho's on the run again, and he was being held by Elazuzzi there, I thought. Morocco got away with one. He's starting to feel really at home, Ricardinho. And Hatab at the other end, and Jeffinho just about held his ground and did enough. Hatab felt the contact there. Nonato. Equally, that was quite a heavy collision with Gilly. But corners the call. So Cassio and Jeffinho. Trip on Jeffinho. Nothing given. Razak, or rather Hatab, back uh, defending with Ricardinho, and he did well. They're certainly physically strong, these Moroccan players. Difficult to dispossess. Guess that's the least we should expect, really. As play's been stopped, it's it's Gilly's mask who's come which has come completely away. That's the chance for Ricardinho. I think the guide thought from that position he was absolutely nailed on to score. Hatab, he did so well to find the ball, and it was a decent effort. The guide was calling him through. But at that pace, you can imagine that the communication has to be so sharp and so precise to get any meaningful message into an attacker bearing down on goal. Often the message from the guide behind the goal to the attacker is about distance between the ball and goal. But they got that everything right, really. And it was a good save by Luan to keep the score nil-nil. And that's where we are after 11 minutes and 34 seconds. So restarting with the drop ball. It's Cassio for Brazil, away from Hatab. Now it's going to come towards Ricardinho. And Azuzi got there first. Hatab. Did well to find Azuzi. 
Can he get it back to his teammate? Well, that's the idea. Just didn't strike it. But he's, he's a thorn in the side of Brazil at the moment, Hatab. He might get another shooting chance. Well, well. Abdel Razak Hatab for Morocco against the champions. He kept on persisting. And what a huge surprise. First time in the Paralympic Games and they dare to take the lead against the unbeatable Brazil. Fine finish into the bottom corner from Hatab, who won it back from Cassiu. And cue the jubilation. Well, he scored six times in the African Championship last year, Hatab, including two goals against the hosts Cameroon in the final. But uh, I would wager he will savour that goal more than any he has scored in his career to this point. Midway through the first half, then. And a shocker for Brazil. Ricardinho, lovely turn. And Azuzi found him well and made another good tackle. They look a good unit at the back, Morocco. When one gets beaten, another comes into cover. That's as it should be, of course. And Azuzi. It's not going to get to Hatab. Well, it he did get there in front of. Nonato. But it's Brazil ball and they're looking for Ricardinho, of course. Tackle by Hatab and corner will result. There's the finish. What a moment for Morocco. Corner. That didn't go to plan. Morocco ball. Well, Driss El Muntaki has called the timeout for Morocco. Savour it. Savour it as long as possible. Keep the 1 0 on the scoreboard for as long as you can. Crowder of course have come to celebrate the wonderful Brazilian team which is not just the defending Paralympic champions not just the only team ever to have won Paralympic gold but they've never lost a match in those three tournaments yeah a chance to give the players a, a reminder of just what support they have out here today Prior to today, in the Paralympic Games, the only team to score against Brazil was China in 2008. In 2004, and in London four years ago, they won the gold medal without conceding a goal. That's how big that moment for Morocco was in the context of Paralympic five-a-side football. So when we talk about a shock for Brazil, that will be a mighty one. Cassio it was who got caught in possession. He went in strongly, Hatab. Cassio tried to recover, but the presence of mind to having won it, turn. And he got up and turned and finished. And it was just terrific. Well, Maybe it's not too early to concede that Morocco are better than maybe we expected they might be. Which is good for the tournament, good for the sport in the long run, of course. instantly looking out for Ricardinho. 
beautifully well away from El Azuzi. Corner kick off Gili, who did well actually to locate the direction from which Ricardinho was coming. And it's just the swiftness with which he pulls that ball away under the sole of the shoe and changes direction, Ricardinho. Six corner. And go for the aerial route. Jeffinho changing the angle. Cassio. Out goes Becker to make the challenge on Ricardinho. Swiftly away. And then he went into Hatab. And Hatab made contact. And I'm not sure Hatab knew he was coming. There may not have been a voy from Hatab. And the contact brings the free kick right outside the, uh, the penalty box. And it's really close. So six metres and change away. Third foul from Morocco. So Brazil would have the option to go for the eight metre penalty, but they're closer in than that, so no need. Right. Will they go direct for goal this time? Ricardinho, well, <laughs> defenders and goalkeeper made a huge wall between them. Basically parked the bus, didn't they? And the bus came steaming out and did its job. Jeffinho. It's a lovely little pass. Oh, and the goalkeeper came outside his penalty, his goal area, to put his foot on the ball. And that, therefore, is a penalty. That is an error by Samir Barra, who just lost his composure there. He was rolling across in front of goal, and he was just so tempted. I mean, I'm not sure Donato would have got there. And he controlled it outside the goal area, and that's a, it's a clear violation. And he knows what a mistake he's made there. It worked so hard to get in front in this game and to keep Brazil out. Now the six metre penalty for Nonato. And quite evidently a terrific chance for the hosts to equalise. Substitution before the penalty is taken. Hatab, the goal scorer, is going off. Substitutions are unlimited throughout the course of the match. The captain, Mohamed Daoudi, who is on. Long time for Nonato to wait. Maybe that was part of the uh, reason for the change. clear for Nonato from Luis Felipe. Can Samir Barra in the Morocco goal make amends? Nonato to equalize for Brazil. Oh, and Barra makes the save. Well, well. Hit with force, but he went the right way. And Brazil denied. And this is proving to be Tricky old morning for them so far. Ricardinho, the captain, can he bail them out? He's on the run. Ooh, and again, the goalkeeper reached outside the box and made contact. And then El Azuzi, well, I don't think he knew that Ricardinho was down below him on the floor. 
he was he went to whack the ground in frustration El Azuzi and ended up falling right on top of Ricardinho I mean there was a foul in there I think the goalkeeper also touched it no it's the trip for which the penalty has been given and again the dancing feet of Ricardinho the challenge from Gilly might have been okay but El Azuzi certainly was chopping away at the right leg and a second penalty for Brazil within what 45 seconds and a change of penalty taker he doesn't look concerned yet Fabio Vasconcelos long way to go in this match but a rare goal conceded one penalty saved so it's Ricardinho against Sami Ibarra for the equaliser oh and another save another save by Barra my my this really is quite extraordinary in the first half. Who'd have thought it that Morocco would take the lead and now saving two penalties? I'm sure it's too early for Brazil to doubt themselves. They're so used to winning against all comers. Daoudi has his arm up stopping the game because his mask has, has come away. But the referees are playing an advantage, I think. It's Ricardinho. Again, the defenders are well organised in that block. And now they will stop the play to readjust the mask of Daoudi. That's the save. Well, the penalty went down the middle from Ricardinho and he probably didn't get the height he was hoping for. Well, that's the Nonato save prior to that. Well, Sami Ibarra has been right in the action, the sighted goalkeeper for Morocco, the 32-year-old. Daudi and Nonato contesting the ball. Nonato with a super turn. Decent save by Barra again. But the swiftness of the change of direction. With the defenders on block. The effect is dramatic that all of them went the one direction and Nonato went back the other. Is Ricardinho, he's listening out for the calls from Imad Berke. Nonato in to help out. Again, the tackling is pretty fierce from Mor Morocco. Nonato, oh, beautiful. Oh, so unlucky against the post. He thought he'd scored. The noise from the crowd was so great. And now they have to settle again, as the referee is indicating. It just won't go in at the moment for Brazil. That is as close as they've come. Well, this is a really terrific contest to start the five-a-side football competition. Five minutes to half-time. Daoudi and El Azuzi combining to get it away from Cassio. Well, Azuzi went clattering into Nonato. But we play on. And Cassio, or Nonato rather, nearly went all the way through. Hussam Gilly stood his ground well. Ricardinho, though. And still Ricardinho this time. Good save. Nonato. The crowd can barely contain themselves. And all Brazil get is a corner. The crowd are more on edge, frankly, than 
one might have expected beforehand again terrific dribbling and again he's maneuvering himself down the left hand side Riccardinho to cut back onto the right foot that was the effort by Nonato against the post <laughs> so difficult for the crowd to, to keep quiet at a moment like that well, we've got the goalkeeper Barra down and we've got Hussam Gili down as well he's been right in the thick of the action Barra and Daoudi's going back off again and Hatab is going to re-enter the fray So back on comes the goal scorer, Abdel Razak Hatab, and Hussam Gili is going to have to come off as well. And that's just a bit of water. Three and a half minutes then to half time. Brazil nil, Morocco one. Scoreline that nobody was expecting. Bit of opportunism. Opportunism, rather, by Abdel Razak Khatab. Robbing the defender in his own penalty area. And then finishing well. Driush is on for Gili. So it was a double change. Another Brazilian corner. Jeffinho again coming out from the right. Regathered it and away from the tab, but Barra is able to take uh, hold of it. Jeffinho. He hasn't quite managed to work himself into the shooting positions that Ricardinho has. Well found by Khatab again, and he was breaking there. Felt he was fouled by Cassiu. Here's Shafinho. Immediately switching it to Ricardinho. Away from Berka, not for the first time. There's a run to goal here. Well, El Azuzi timed the tackle nicely. Cassiu's got to be sharp. Hatab was sharper. Now, can he get there in time? Not quite. Couldn't quite locate the sound of the ball quickly as it rolled towards Luan's goal. It was a decent chance for Morocco had he done so. Jeffinho stopped. Ball loose. And Azuzi has got it. Well picked up the pass by Hatab. He's having a real impact on this game. But uh, from that kind of range, that was hugely ambitious. <laughs> half time getting closer. Two and a half minutes to go to the interval. Morocco can get into the break with a lead. Oh, they'll feel terrific about their chances, maybe. Ricardinho, they have to stop him, though, and he's gone all the way through. And was that a foul by Berke? The referee thought not. The loose boot belongs to one of the Moroccan players. And so play will be stopped while Hatab puts it back on. Well, another really good run by Ricardinho, and he'd set off so quickly 
He got in behind the Moroccan block that time. And actually cut back into trouble. Let's have a look at the replay. And it's the challenge by Berke. It's got to be very close to another penalty. They've had two, Brazil. Both saved by the goalkeeper, Samir Bada for Morocco. Brazil have also hit the post. It's been full of incident this first half. It's been terrific. So into the last two minutes of the first half we go. As Cassio moves into the middle third, the head coach on the sideline will be giving him some instruction. If he needs any. Ricardinho always lurking on that left-hand side. Berka robust twice there. Well, the first one was a barge. The second one was much more of a hack from Imad Berka. And now that's a yellow card for the number four. I'm not altogether surprised. That was um, a fairly stiff tackle. A man whose ambition is to compete in visually impaired boxing. So combat sports are <laughs> his thing. And because team fouls have long since been accumulated, Brazil this time will go to the eight meter penalty mark. Difficult to beat the goalkeeper from this range but Cassiu will give it a go. Luis Felipe, the guy, just waiting for the cue from the referee to start. Another test for Sami Ibarra. He saved two from closer in than this. Cassiu for Brazil. Another good save. But the ball is loose. Out by Berka. The tab is quick and he's found it again. And he's causing them anxiety at the back. There's no doubt about that. He's a one-man front line, but he's doing a terrific job for Morocco. Not afraid of shooting from awkward positions. Now Jeffinho nearly got away. And he couldn't quite trap it by the boards in time. So you'll see the clock stops in the last two minutes of the first half. It's becoming a day to remember for Samir Barra in the Morocco goal. When you still wouldn't bank on him keeping a clean sheet with the twinkle-toed Brazilians running at him so regularly. But so far, so good for the men in red. It's a fine pass by Jeffinho to Ricardinho. Away from goal first, then back towards it. The floated ball is an interesting tactic because it doesn't make much of a noise when it's in the air, the ball. Brazil being forced back. Cassia will be nervous because Hatab has already robbed him to score on one occasion and he's got it again. And again, he's miles out when he tries the shot. But he is so confident. 17 seconds to half time. Is there time for Brazil to create a chance? Well, with a view to achieving that, the timeout's been taken by Fabio Vasconcelos. I guess whatever form of football they come out to see, the team in front of them is wearing Brazil shirts, they expect them to be winning. No different here, and indeed the expectation perhaps on this fighter side team, I would think as great or greater than the expectation on any set of Brazilian players. There are the statistics to this point. 12 shots on goal 
six on target for Brazil. But no one's conclusively beaten Sami Ibarra. The Nonato effort off the post was the one time when he was beaten. But these two penalty saves, the two penalty saves and the one eight metre penalty save from Cassiu will be on his highlights reel, I'm sure. Abdu Vasconcelos still looks very calm. He'll have total faith in these players. Of course, he's, he's played with the majority of them and won gold medals with them. Their trust in one another will be huge. Here we go then, 17 seconds. Not much time for Ricardinho. He's going to have to go straight for goal. 10 seconds. Down the left as usual. He's got it back, running out of time. One shot maybe, there's one second to go. And he just thought Nonato might try and get it away. But this red wall in front of Brazil has stayed firm. And who'd have thought it at half time, the African champions from Morocco, their first game in Paralympic five-a-side football, lead the unbeatable Brazil, who've won all three gold medals in this sport. Half-time score, amazingly, Brazil nil, Morocco one. And it's given us a really interesting narrative with Brazil having to try and find a way through well-organized Moroccan defense, a robust Moroccan defense as well. Six fouls and the double penalty, the eight meter penalty that Cassio took towards the end. 73% of the ball for Brazil. But uh, no goals. And Hatab up front is lively and clever and confident and he's concentrating very well it was impressive in the opening minutes when he intercepted a pass and was able to run through and get a good shot away first time he's quick and then when he robbed Cassio in his own penalty area to put Morocco in front on 13 minutes Gave Brazil a real fright. They've had the chances, of course, to get back on terms and go in front since then with two penalties. The eight-meter penalty. Shot against the post. Ricardinho has had countless dribbles from the left-hand side where he's got close to goal. But he hasn't been able to find the back of the Moroccan net. And it really is a surprising scoreline. And it, I think it sets up a very exciting second half, too. Some of the best moments of the first half. Ricardinho's dribbling. I mean, it really is enjoyable to behold. Didn't come in from the right-hand side too many times, Ricardinho. And here's this first chance for Morocco. And Hatab, at full pace, locates the ball so well. And you can see that the, the shout from the guide behind the goal. He got on a good line. There was Ricardinho. When he, that was his best moment, really. He dribbled himself into such a good position and everybody thought he was going to score. Here's the goal. Cassiu finds himself challenged and then Hatab manages to swivel and threw the defender's legs into the net. Hugely important moment for the Moroccans. Their first ever goal in Paralympic football. That was the first of two six-metre penalties that Sami Barra saved, and there's been no way past the Moroccan goalkeeper since then. So, will the champions come back in the second half? It will be very well worth watching. Half-time score. It's Brazil nil, Morocco one.
Players preparing for the start of the second period here at the Olympic Tennis Centre. And what a big 25 minutes is coming up, particularly for the Brazilian team. Imagine the pressure, the expectation, the desire for them to win another gold medal in front of their home supporters here in Rio. But then, of course, equally for Morocco, who are pioneers, really, the first African team to compete in Paralympic five-a-side football. And they are doing their country proud first and foremost, but also their continent with a very good first half performance. Really well organized. A finisher in Abderazak Hatab, who's got the only goal. And a fine goalkeeping display as well from Samir Bada, who saved two penalties from six meters and one from eight meters. And had a little bit of good fortune as well, which always helps. crowd of course have been as quiet as they have to be throughout the majority of the match but they are just waiting to give this Brazil team a huge hand if they can get back on terms some energy coming for this from the sidelines for the Brazil team there'll be a bit of nervous energy out there as well the last thing they would expect or imagine to happen was that they could feasibly lose this opening game against the side many expect to be the weakest in the group. Turkey, the European champions, Iran, the Asian champions are also in there. So it's a group of champion sides, Pool A. Who'd have thought we'd begin the second half of this opening match in Pool A with the champions a goal down to Morocco. But that is the way we do begin it. 25 minutes for the Brazilian side to achieve the victory everybody expects them to earn. And oh, it nearly ran all the way through for Nonato. Might have been made a little bit more difficult for him by the fact the crowd did get excited. Azuzi's ball's going to no man's land, really, from Morocco's perspective. Here's Ricardinho. Hatab is staying with him, keeping contact with him. Defending from the front, Hatab. Should be Nonato's ball for Brazil. And again, all four of Brazil's outfield players have gold medals in the locker from previous games they're experienced characters they won't be panicking yet by any means but they're not used to conceding goals that's the truth Jeffinho goalkeeper always looking for Hatab that should be Ricardinho's Now he's on the run, his favourite position on the left-hand side. And a foul given, just outside the six-meter area. It's 
Number three, Driush, who I think was the guilty party. Imad Berka, the number four, is on a yellow card. Maybe he won't be quite flying in with as much abandon as he was in the first half as a result of that. You could hear the instruction in Portuguese, seven meters distance. Jefinho immediately maneuvering the block of Moroccan defenders away with that swift burst. But again, they've been able to react, Morocco. Well found by Khatab. Ricardinho again. Likes it to go himself. Again, the defenders were well placed, took the power off the shot. More defending for Brazil to do. Morocco do, are looking for a quick counter. But now they've got players forward and there's a bit of space. Nonato. Couldn't find a way through. Now Khatab. It's opened up the game here. Khatab might elect to hit this. That's been his instinct every time he's got within 10 metres of goal, frankly. Crowd are getting carried along by this. There's a lot of external noise at the moment. Fine tackle by Cassiu on Hatab. But Hatab is nothing if not persistent. And he came clattering into Ricardinho there. My word. Well, he is quick and unafraid, and he's got a really good sense of where the ball is. But that time, he, he, I think he took ball, but he took ban as well. They really have come here with it. A very clear determination and a large skill set, the Moroccans. Ricardinho is uh, none the worse for it. Straight out to Chefinho. I can't think he's had a shot on goal, really, Chefinho, so far. And Azuzi, just no way through that defensive block at the moment. Cassiu ran into trouble. Five minutes of the second half have elapsed already then. Just 20 left for Brazil to find their first goal of the tournament. And there it is. Ricardinho. Well, it's relief as well as celebration for Brazil. And listen to the noise, the support behind this team. They've been desperate to witness a moment like that, and they've got one. The trademark move down the left, the swift feet and the early shot high into the far corner. It was beautifully positioned and so difficult for Barra in the Moroccan goal. Brilliant equaliser. Delightful hug between Ricardinho and the guide Luis Felipe. The guides that are usually the first players or the first members of the coaching staff onto the field to celebrate with the, the player who scored. Well, he's, he's looked calm, the Brazilian coach, all the way through, even with the, a goal down for so long. Can't say his expression really seems to have changed, but there must have been a celebration from him too when 
that equaliser went in. Now Ricardinho again. Becker, he can't hold the boards with both arms when they're battling for it there. That would be a foul. So Jeffinho and Ricardinho together with the corner. Hatab got out to it quickly. Now a battle. Little back heel got a gasp from the crowd. But it didn't really solve the problem for Brazil. Ricardinho would be wary of Hatab, not least because he's been slammed into the boards by him once or twice. Cassiou, space. Jeffinho to his left. And Jeffinho finding space. Super save by the goalkeeper Barra because Jeffinho tried to wrong foot him at the near post. Morocco not helped by the fact Hatab is down here. And they're a defender light. Well, they'll be grateful in the end that Cassio's shot has gone wide. And they won't want their star man, Hatab. Oh. <laughs> Hatab down getting treatment. And um, clattered into by a player who didn't realize he was there to add injury to injury. So Berke is going to take a breather and Gilly is going to come back on. But the pressing concern, I think, for Morocco will be the injury to Abderrazak Hatab, who's been really key to what they've done today. Shefinu getting so close to putting Brazil in front for the first time. Captain's back on, so Daoudi has replaced Hatab for the time being. 18 minutes left, and it's well poised at 1-1. And this is Gilly, who's just come on. Cassie just made a challenge at a key moment. Monato. Free kick Brazil is the call. I mean, clearly Brazil are favourites to go on and win the game, but it, it's not as straightforward as that. Morocco have posed a threat on the counter-attack throughout. And even if Hatab is off the pitch, I'm sure that will still remain. Yeah, he was holding him and nudging him, Gilly, all the way along there. The referee didn't like it. Monato out on the right-hand boards, but Morocco got two men to him. Cassio Rice was looking towards Jeffinho. Daudi got there first. <laughs> Jeffinho thought his teammates were a little closer to the ball than they were, but Donato has got there. Couldn't turn. Daudi sticking to the task. Here's Ricardinho, though. Again, his favourite area, but they just stood firm. And they're well organised again, the Moroccans. El Azuzi, has got no support with him at all. But he's sticking at it, El Azuzi. And he, oh, he nearly got there and he still might. And only now could the goalkeeper hold it inside his 
his goal area. The goalkeeper can't come out beyond that small box in front of goal. And so even at that position, with El Azuzi so close, I mean, there's, a, there's a real question as to whether or not Luan does stick a glove out there onto the ball. They might have got away with one there, Brazil. Maybe the referee saw a foul before that, but Luan just got a little nervous, and for my money, just stuck a glove out. But if the whistle had gone prior to that... Here's Jeffinho. Oh, yes! Oh, he got the shot away unexpectedly. And that's a huge moment for Brazil who take the lead just 15 minutes from the end of the game for the very first time. He caught Barra completely by surprise. And all of a sudden, the champions have turned it round in the space of five minutes with a goal apiece from the world's two finest players. And Jeffinho here, the initial turn and stop, and the shot early right into the corner. I mean, he's a good seven metres out. But he got it low with pace and little backlift. And the agony on Barra's face tells you everything. Well, now they'll be feeling a whole lot better. And it must be swelling the heart to hear the support from all around the stadium. The two best known players on the Brazil team with goals in the second half to turn round a surprising deficit. And now what for Morocco? Because they're now diverting well away from plan A. It's quite early for a beer, but <laughs> the coals are well worth celebrating. And just the little turn was enough to create a little bit of space. And just before Gilly could get the challenge in, and it was just before, wasn't it? Jeffinho struck for goal, and he struck with deadly accuracy. You feel a bit for Sami Ibarra, saved two penalties. And a third from eight metres in the first half to preserve Morocco's lead, but... Um, now they've got a real job on to get back into the, the contest. Damiao is on. The officials have got a job to, to try and quell the support. It's Ricardinho, isn't it, who has actually has gone out. So Brazil just may be electing to get a bit more steel in. Now that they've got the lead and give their best player a, a, a bit of a breather. He's taken a few whacks as Ricardinho in this game. Here's Daoudi for Morocco. With their star man, Khatab, off the field at the moment. It's going to be a Morocco corner, I would fancy. Gone the other way. And Jeffinho quickly trying to launch a Brazilian counter. Driush with the ball away, but straight to Nonato, and there's room for Nonato here. Yes! And that really should do it for Brazil. 
Three goals in six minutes. And a complete turnaround. And in that short time, a demonstration of just why Brazil are such big favourites for the gold medal. Fine goals from three of the four starting outfield players. And Monato was quick to seize upon the opportunity here. For once, the Moroccan block of four was not so solid. And he took swift advantage and squeezed the shot in between the legs of the goalkeeper, Barra. Joy unconfined on the pitch and on the bench and in the stands. Azuzi on the run. But he's lost it and Jefinho has picked it up. And there was a gasp of excitement for a moment. Monatu and Cassiu unusually just made contact with one another, but Dreyusha stuck to it. have to do it all himself really to Ryush. there's nothing up with him in support Cassiu very strong and he's found Jafinu and there's more danger for Morocco here Cassiu just clearing out of the way for Jafinho to try and slip round the side. Back with Damiao, hasn't seen much of the ball. That would be a goal kick to Morocco. Well, here's the goal from Nonato. The last ditch challenge did come across, but uh, Nomatu was already preparing to shoot. Hatab is going to come back on for Morocco for the last uh, 12 and a half minutes. With Daoudi exiting the field. Well, the evidence the first half, he's Morocco's best player. Let's see what difference he can make. I think the, the, the task is going to be too great for them now with a two goal deficit, but uh, immediately he's causing problems. Hatab. That will be a goal kick. Came off the heel of the Moroccan. Jefinho's got it. Is Cassio. Dreyush with a good tackle. And he will have Hatab up with him. Hatab away from Jefinho initially. Zuzi. They still can't get much past halfway, Morocco. Hatab and El Azuzi. There's a long way out, El Azuzi. Difficult to imagine him finding the kind of shot that would beat Luan from that range. Cassiu for Brazil. 
this is going to come to Nonato. And it must just have come off the goalkeeper. If so, he's done really well, Sammy about it. The challenge came in and it, it dribbled invitingly across in front of goal. Yes, it came, came off the shin of Barra. Nonato put a good strike on it. Jafinho from the corner. It's a long way round, but that doesn't mean it won't end with a, a good position from which to shoot. Tackle was made by Hatab. Gilly looking for Hatab again. Brazil electing for a solid shape at the back, but they've got the capability of Jefinho on the counter-attack. Man right into Driush. Drush didn't get much of the ball. On the free kick. Eight and a half metres from goal. Stats say Morocco have committed ten fouls and Brazil not a single one. To get an accurate picture of which side has had much more of the ball. That also is a compliment to the dribbling skills of the Brazilians. They make it so difficult to, to track uh, the ball's position. Here's Nonato. Into the wall. He might get another go. Azuzi was in well. Driusha's there in front of Jefinho. Driush lost it. Before Je Jefinho could get there, he found it again. Hatab. An excellent pass to El Azuzi. Trying to switch play quickly, Morocco, and, and keep the Brazilian block spread apart. quite able to make that dart away from the defenders swiftly enough. Here's Khatab once again. No way through, Jafinho has got it. Switching for Nonato. Waited for it to come off the boards. Nonato's found his way through and just couldn't. Control the ball at the key moment. Just see Jafinho concentrating hard on the direction of the ball to try and find it. Has got there in the end. That's a splendid pass. And Nonato with one touch to control and a second to fire. And right on goal as well. It's another fine save by Barra. But that link up play between two players with no sight at all. I mean, that is extraordinarily good. When it happens at that speed, almost impossible to defend against. Casio from the corner. Hatab got back in there and judged it well. And he's found the ball again. Well, it's a decent save from Luana. Morocco have got a corner, but his sense of where the ball is going, Hatab, is extraordinary. Accelerated here on the counter-attack and seemed to run around Damiao. Well, he felt the defender and then got round the other side and hit the shot first time. That was extraordinary.
El Azuzi towards Hatab. Thought about the first time effort, then forced another save from Luan. Well, they really are a different team with him on the field. It's another terrific tackle by Hatab, denying Donato. He's gone right the way through. Well, it could easily have been 3 2. It's a terrific run by Abderazak Hatab. There are more goals for him in this tournament and he plays in this manner. It was just running away from him when the shot sliced wide of the near post. But three really fine efforts on goal in the space of a couple of minutes from the Moroccan number nine. The cheer is for Jeffinho who's coming off and getting a huge hand. It might be some while before we can resume. Thiago has come on. Safe to say, Jafinha is a popular man. His goal put Brazil in front after they'd been behind for most of the first half and five minutes of the second. Ricardinho with the equaliser, Jafinha with a 2-1. And then Nonato to put a two goal cushion between the sides. Coming towards the last five minutes. And Morocco are going to have to come forward and try and put a challenge in. A lifted pass from Damiao bouncing over the kickboards. I think the crowd have been captivated by this match. Not only have they witnessed the, the skills of the Brazilian players on a regular basis, but they've seen a real contest too with Morocco reaching a standard that maybe not many realised they possessed, and Raz, uh, Hatab in particular really proving to be a difficult opponent. And he's on the ball again, and he's totally unafraid to shoot. That was tricky with the deflection off the defender, but Luan can watch it into his gloves. Thiago winning it back for Brazil. But then running into Hatab. And Azuzi, no way through. Cassiu and Damiao got themselves in a bit of a pickle there, and then that was a trip on Hatab. And there was a breakdown in communication there in the Brazilian defence, with Cassiu and Damiao going for the same ball. And Cassiu, in the end, I don't think he'll be too sorry to commit the foul with Hatab running beyond him. It's exactly eight metres from goal. The defenders have to be five metres from the kick. And they've got to get a bit closer to goal. Goalkeeper's area is five by two. So they're, they're it's a generous five metres, I think, now. First time we've seen the Moroccan guide, Saeed Himi. And the Brazilian team have barely committed a foul. Indeed, that was the first of the entire match, let alone one within range. You'd have to expect that this will end with a, a strike from Hatab. He's there with El Azuzi. Where will they go? It will be El Azuzi. Didn't really threaten Luan's goal. 
Masia was the only one to come out. They were leaving the goalkeeper quite deliberately with a, a clear sight of what was happening. And backing Luan to be able to make the save if El Azuzi found the target, which he couldn't. Tiago towards Monato. Again, again, it's difficult. He knew what the intention was, Nonato, but again, when the ball is lifted, makes little sound. Nonato electing a long diagonal. And Tiago was onto that really quickly. Hussam Gilly's challenge was a little anxious. Thiago Silva, he's only 20, he's making his Paralympic Games debut. He's got a, a youthful look about him. Damiao, the number five, who's on the pitch for Brazil as well, is, is 41. Cassio looking for Nonato. Oh, look. Haven't seen too many of those from Morocco. And the defenders have got in one another's way, but they've still got it through to Hatab. And even from the tight angle, he's still able to test the goalkeeper. Thiago Silva making ground. And finding Nonato, well... Cassio was the second best option, but it's come to him. El Azuzi has been a strong part of this Moroccan side. Damiao brushing him off. When he wanted a goal himself, Damiao, and he nearly got one. Good save low down by Samir Bara. Last minute. Oh, and again, Hatab from a difficult angle is able to find the terrific shot and force a fine save from Luan. His instinct for goal is extraordinary. Thirty-four seconds remaining. The three points are going to be there for Brazil. His coaching staff are being urged to calm down somewhat. Just trapped El Azuzi against the boards with two players, so Morocco will get the free kick. Clock is stopped again. about something on the Brazilian bench. The referee and the staff are, are very observant in terms of keep making sure that the blindfolds are all correctly uh, attached and sealed down. Last 24 seconds then. Can Morocco find a second goal? Hatab. And Hatab all the way through. And Luan did really well. Narrowing the angle, made himself big. But again, it's another extraordinary run from Abdelrazak Hatab. Slaloming his way through the Brazilian defence. Might be the last moment that Morocco have in this game. It's going to be a Brazilian victory by three goals to one and a victory that they deserved and that they will celebrate but my goodness they were made to work by a terrific Morocco team who were well organized and had an extraordinary attacker in Hatab who made life very difficult scored once gave Morocco a surprise lead 
And the goalkeeper Barra kept out a couple of Brazilian penalties too. But second half goals from Ricardinho, Jefinho and Nonato. And Brazil have beaten Morocco here by three goals to one. And what an enjoyable contest to start this Paralympic five-a-side football competition. The dribbling skills of Ricardinho and Jefinho. But 15 shots for Morocco against Brazil, eight of which were on target. I mean, those are extremely good numbers against the side of the quality of the Paralympic champions. They certainly gave it their all, Morocco. But it's Brazil who will be taking a bow in front of this passionate home crowd at the Olympic Tennis Centre.